welcome to yet another edition of Time Pass. It's not just Time Pass. We are doing serious stuff here, so please note. Uh, today we have two wonderful guests, Ritu Dalmia, who I've known for the longest time. She's a wonderful host, a superb chef, and a great raconteur. And Niket Khatan, who I've just recently met virtually, and a fascinating uh, person. Uh, is into all sorts of very interesting therapies, but today he's going to focus on sound therapy with us. So I'm going to start with Ritu because I think we're all currently obsessed uh, with food, and I think we're in the middle of this culinary renaissance. I think everyone thinks that they've become a chef. So uh, Ritu, what do you think uh, here uh, in this lockdown? You got away from Italy just in time. Let me talk a little about that. Correct. Right? right you got away just in time from your restaurant well i'll tell you i'm not so sure if it was a, such a good idea or not huh. because uh, the reality is the lockdown is a lot harsher in india than it is in italy at the moment okay. uh, i mean i'm right now believe it or not i got away from italy but then i managed to get myself stuck in goa okay and i would like to complain about it in spite of the fact there's been no supplies in goa as i'm sure you guys have all heard yeah. it's one state which had no supply for weeks and weeks but i have to admit i'm still grateful to god at least you know i have fresh air around me and i have reinvented myself you know the best thing that could have happened to me which i'm sure is happening to everyone around yeah. the country is that you are no longer cooking according to a recipe you are cooking mm. now based on what's available exactly. and that really has been a humbling lesson for me uh, so it's really been an amazing journey the beginning of lockdown was making all fancy food because the fridges were still stocked up right you know so i was doing a camembert souffle one day i was doing a uh, risotto and then second week onwards uh, the things started changing slightly Third week onwards, I was stealing jackfruit from neighbors' trees and making jackfruit curry, stealing green mangoes and making panna out of it. And now uh, it has come to a point where I don't want fancy ingredients anymore. Right. I really have come, and I'm really, as I said, uh, maybe the whole world was put into COVID so I could learn to cook with <laughs> what was available rather than what's not. But um, no, it's been a, as I said, it's been a great journey. And Kaveri, you too, said that you know me for a while and an amazing restaurant here. But I think that post will not be good anymore post the lockdown because. I think there will be so many new chefs who will come out of this <laughs> lockdown. Uh, many of them who must have cooked so much food which they never did in the past. Yeah. And you will see a lot of these new standalone restaurants coming with chefs who learned how to cook during the lockdown. <laughs> so you're quite hopeful of the restaurant business uh, coming back. Uh, but no, I'm way. not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but you see, this uh, loneliness, this solitude, this time to reflect right. has made me more acceptable to the situation. So <laughs> I'm not sitting and crying tears anymore. But yeah. uh, I don't know how to explain to you. I think the world will change. Every yeah. We all know the world will change. And the sad part is restaurants um, for Indians especially is not a necessity. Yeah. It yeah. is a luxury. It is a serious luxury. So sooner or later, people will go out, but a lot will change. A lot will change. People will no longer go to crowded restaurants. People are going to be very scared about the hygiene levels at the restaurant. Who are the people behind the restaurant? How it's been cooked? So it's not looking very bright at the moment. Restaurants are in fact the last lot of people, hospitality in general, to recover. Yeah. But as I said, uh, these five weeks has done my aura and my level of calm a lot of good. So I'm I'm okay. I will take each step as it comes. In a way, Ritu, doesn't it remind you of your growing up years? Because uh, uh, Sorish uh, was telling me about how you grew up with the uh, uncle smuggling in cheeses and all sorts yes, of yeah. things. Because we grew up in a time of complete frugality, didn't we? Absolutely, absolutely. Frugality and also you grew up in a time, we grew up in a time where uh, imports, India was a closed country. Foreign goods were something in, sold in Palika Bazaar in uh, Calcutta, in AC market in, uh, sorry, AC market in Calcutta, in Calcutta Palika, Palika Bazaar in, in Delhi, Delhi. Yeah. and that Hira Panna in Mumbai, Delhi, that's Mumbai. where you went 
yeah. uh, to buy smuggled olive oil and cheeses which had been lying in their refrigerator for three years, four years. No <laughs> one gave a shit, and you just took what came your way, you yeah. know. So, uh, in some ways, I think it's going to happen again. Not because we are a closed country, but also for me, when I go back, whenever the lockdown ends, and when I'm able to go back to Delhi. we will have to relook at all our menus all again especially the italian restaurants because right. i don't think fresh supplies of cheese olive oil etc is going to come back in a hurry yeah. so it really will finally like i said a lot of things we had already made it local like the vegetables meat yeah. fish everything was sustainable uh, locally grown but few things which were absolute necessity and will still remain Mm-hmm. uh like parmesan aged parmesan good salami good parma ham i think it will be something which will be long time before we see it back on the menu so one has to put a creative hat on now and to see how uh you can still have an italian menu without messing around with the authenticity of it without using any imported products right um- So in a way the world is forcing us to become zero carbon uh, you know whether we like it or not yes we're eating local we're eating seasonal yes we're eating whatever we get and uh, you know we're making do with that uh, and can i tell you one thing obviously yeah. there's something good in it yeah. because i've been here for 5 weeks i'm not a very healthy human being in general but i have never felt better right. my blood sugar is completely in control uh, i've never like i said physically I have never been in a better shape than I have been in last 5 weeks and the only reason or the only thing I can pin it down to is that I'm only eating local and fresh food. I am not like every meal is cooked. It's no longer about meal cooked and you eat it tomorrow because I'm so bored so there is no other occupational therapy. <laughs> so cooking a meal has become my day's highlight. <laughs> so I'm eating fresh food and I'm eating local food and as I said I want a refund from all the spas and the wellness places <laughs> I've been to over in all these years uh because I'm I have done a better detox by just eating clean than I've ever done great what are the things that you can tell us today ritu because our our viewers are uh, you know I think mostly vegetarian I'm not sure oh wonderful <laughs> I'm not sure but I think uh, basically I think everyone wants to know what do you do with what you have around you how do you make a nice simple but wonderful meal and nourishing meal absolutely so I'll tell you many interesting things have happened in the last yeah. days yeah. I had a lot of uh, pasta packets lying with me here right okay but there were no nice vegetables there was no asparagus no blue cheeses no sage leaves etc and then I remembered in Italy in the south they used to make a pasta with loki. I never ordered it. I never ate it because for me it was really beneath me to eat a pasta with loki. I had no choice and I made it and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. So today it does not matter whether you want to do Italian, you want to do Indian, you want to do Asian. You right. can do anything and everything with what's available. Right. So for example the other day I made a handwo okay i love gujarati food i'm a closeted gujarati in my heart not a marwari <laughs> and <Don't> say that <laughs> i know <laughs> but it's true i love the food and the thing is hanbo needs uh, carrots okay. it needs cauliflower it needs bottle gourd okay uh-huh. and those were the days when none of it was available because vegetables were not available okay. so i put i had made some sprouts at home okay. i put lots of sprouts in it i used a can tin of corn uh-huh. okay mashed it a little bit added that right. and should have not put onions in it since it's a jain food but i still put onions and it was still amazing so i didn't need the carrot i didn't need right. the cabbage which is very easily available but in those days it was not available to me right you know and this morning in fact let's see if i still have an avocado left so yeah. i will do something for you yes uh, avocado yeah i mean luxury Yes. So first the yesterday first was the first day in the market when an avocado with the three four pieces not very nice looking yeah. but it was an emotional moment so I said <laughs> no I will buy it I cut it open it was disgusting there was no way I could have made a uh, guacamole out of it which was right. on my head so what I did was I blended it with dahi 
uh-huh. i added a little bit of seasoning little bit of lemon juice right. and added an egg white and i set it as a mousse oh. okay so uh, it came because it was not ripe enough to be made into a guacamole and obviously it had been lying in the cold storage for way too long right. so even leaving it outside would not have ripened it right but when you make a mousse out of it it didn't matter Right. So it's really been interesting times, you know. So also, like I said, went back to my Calcutta memories. One day made Lake Kaludam, and this is one thing I want to tell to all your viewers. Yeah, you know, this is an amazing time to go back to the food that you grew up with, because we all are living in a time when we all want to do the so-called exotic food or foreign food or something which has a own factor. But in this process. over the years what we have forgotten is a food that we grew up with right. because that's something we started taking for granted mm-hmm. but the reality is today it is getting less and less cooked in any of our homes right. so for me the most fun part has been uh, making aloo posh to which i have never done in my life before yeah. because i remember it from making the lake ka aloo dum which the puchka walas used to sell yeah, yeah. you know i uh, made aloo pethe ki sab so lot of food which for calcutta people may be an everyday food but for me was something of my memory from 30 years 35 years ago right. right so i think for all people who are there in calcutta or any part what is a great time right now for you guys to do is to take on food that you think is time consuming yeah because your maharajas used to make it or your grandmothers used to make it but the reality is all this food requires the minimal ingredients yes. and all ingredients which are so easily available right right you know so lebanese is another great thing which i love to cook in these days because all i need is a bengan yeah to roast it over a fire right i don't there's no tahina available who cares who needs tahina exactly. you yeah. have you have sesame seed just roast it and make a paste of it yourself you will never spend money on a ready made tahina bottle ever again, again because the yeah. homemade tahina is so much nicer right. so baba ganosh is and hummus just chickpea again tahina paste made yourself falafels i've been making a lot of falafel because as i said when the days when i had no vegetables yeah. which was for about 11 days yeah. my main diet was only dry food like rice lentils legumes etc so you had to think of something uh interesting to come up with yeah. every day right. so i still remember i mean one day like we all know sabudana ki khichdi yeah. and yeah. we also know dahi bhat right. that yeah. day i had no rice so i made a dahi bhat but with sabudana mm-hmm. and i just put some fried uh, green chilies which you use for the uh, mirchi vada right. you know just but fried it the spanish way like a padron pepper and added that on topping it was like as a hang on this is going on my new menu whenever uh, we open up again <laughs> so you don't need much the yeah. reality is you need to just be open minded yeah. you need to let go of your prefix notions and yeah. you need to play in your kitchen yeah and and you uh, need a certain amount of fearlessness i think we get of course that's something you need to let go yeah. you need to let who's going to check on you if we are in <laughs> lockdown guys even if you mess it up who cares there's another day to try the lockdown is not opening for another 2 weeks at least so you have 14 more tries uh ritu i want to ask a question about vegetarian and non vegetarianism because yeah. currently there's this big debate you know this this is the time that we go completely vegetarian because look what happens if you eat everything that moves etc etc but you know uh, what what's your take on that I don't agree with it. I'm a vegetarian, so yeah. let me first qualify that statement by saying I'm a vegetarian. I prefer to be a vegetarian, but that's my personal choice. Okay, but you saying that, absolutely. Yeah. But saying that there is no, how shall I say, theory or no proof that by eating meat or chicken or fish you are increasing the chance of. Uh, covid or any other diseases right. the way if you're talking about one uh, you know meat markets yeah. forget about anyone who's not a vegetarian even if an animal eats that yeah they'll be sick yeah. you see the thing is if people make a big story out of that right. there is going to be a huge problem with all the poultry farmers 
yeah. there's going to be a huge pro- problem with all the processors so at the end i think cautiousness is one thing but creating a panic is yet another thing yeah. as i said personally i prefer to be a vegetarian i like being vegetarian i also believe in barnard shaw who always said you don't want your stomach to be the graveyards of the dead but <laughs> yeah. uh, uh the thing is the reality is this is a choice you need to make and because it's covid friendly or not that's the wrong reason let's put it this way right. decide to be a vegetarian become a vegetarian for other reasons human beings we don't have teeth to eat meat the reality is our systems are not made to eat meat yeah. over a period of years our systems have gotten used to it right. so let something else be a choice but not that you will be like the you will catch the chinese virus as our wonderful mr trump trump likes to say yes. <laughs> great so ritu what you going to make for us today so listen i still have one of the shitty avocados left <laughs> um, i don't know you tell me what you guys want me to do so i've done a mousse already but a nice cold soup right because That's it's very nice. hot here yeah Oh, it's hot everywhere. I think Nikita, how is it in Calcutta? Is it hot there as well? By myself. So wait, wait. Okay. So can you see it? Yes. Hang on. Yes. So this is. You're not going to get that. This is a uh, roasted uh, green mango stolen from the garden. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to make a panna out of it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add coconut, fresh coconut water in it, okay. and add some chopped coconut to make a nice. uh non alcoholic margarita for myself in the evening and spike it with vodka if you want <laughs> but let you, so what i'm going to do is let's do a cold soup you okay. know a cold avocado soup because i have dahi right okay and this cold soup or if you want me not to do with avocado i can do it with something else as well no uh, we can do it nice. but so you know again i'm going to do a cheater's way yeah because normally if i would have done it i would have added wasabi i would have added uh you know lots of cream cheese and etc etc i don't have any of that bullshit <laughs> so it's going to be so instead of cream cheese i'm going to put dahi right and the avocado as i said is not good enough to make a guacamole so i'm going to quickly just churn it up uh-huh. blend the avocado yogurt yeah. some lemon juice uh-huh. and then add one egg white if we want we can do it also without egg white and some gelatin set it up okay, okay. and next day it turns into a beautiful looking mousse serve it with cherry tomatoes fresh basil and you have a starter by itself if you don't want to set it up you have a cold avocado soup as again a meal by itself right. or you can serve it with bruschetta but right now we don't have time to set it so i'm going to do a oh, chilled uh, avocado okay. soup Uh, okay. Ritu, Ritu, we've just got a, a request from all our uh, panelists saying, please, instead of avocado, can you use something else which is easily? Yes, absolutely. Because I thought maybe avocado is a problem. So mm-hmm. hang on, let's see. I'm checking in my fridge. Yeah, this is some cucumber there. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. So Yogurt, how much have you taken? See? How many have you taken? No, so I've just chopped it, guys. I like to do everything under five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so now the thing is, I don't know if you guys can get hold of melon. Uh huh. If you can, that's an amazing. Not watermelon, but any other type of melon. Okay. I don't have it, so I'm going to. You see, you just I showed you the mango. Yeah. Which, the green mango, which I had roasted for my panna. Right. Okay, but now I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do a green mango and a cucumber cold soup. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. So, can you see it, uh, Kaveri? Yes. So you put the cucumber and the green Wait. mango in the mixi, in the blender, in a mixi with some yogurt. Right. Okay, because as I said, I don't have any melon, right. and now I'm going to do a little more cheating. Yeah. I have a little bit green chutney left with me from yesterday's lunch. Uh-huh. Okay, which is your regular pudina chutney or your regular hari chutney. Right. Okay, I'm adding a spoon of that to give it an oomph factor. Right. Okay, I have stolen some basil from my garden. My mother would kill me if she was here. She would say raat ko tulsi nahi todte hain, but I have uh-huh. done that. Okay, and I'm going to the fridge to get some ice. 
So just I will repeat. I have roasted green mango. Yeah. I have cucumber. Yeah. I have yogurt. Yeah. I have pudina chutney. Right. Okay. Lots of ice. Salt. Yeah. And just a pinch of sugar. Okay. Right. Because the thing is, green mango is tart. It's sour. Right. Yeah. So I need to make and cucumber has a very neutral flavor. Yeah. So what I want this cold soup to be. Sour, salty, a little bit sweet, and a little bit spicy. Right. Okay. Right. Hang on. I am going to blend it. It's going to be noisy. How many cucumbers? And again, as I said, Ritu, how many cucumbers? Sorry, darling. How many cucumbers have you? Eaten? So listen, for me, I've made enough for okay. me. So okay. Okay. Because four. you're seeing it, so I've added for me for a single person, I've done three cucumber. Huh? And one mango. Okay. And I've done half a mango. Half a mango. Okay. Okay. So let's say wait now. Hold your horses. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Wait. And now I am going to just season it. And who says in time of lockdown you cannot do pretty things? Okay. The simple. Now again, guys, if you want to make the same thing into a mousse, yeah. a cucumber musk melon mousse. Add a little bit of gelatin to it. If you have any cream, any fresh cheese, add to it when you're blending it and set it up. Okay, so you can make use this as a soup. You can use this as if you uh, set it up in ice cube holders. Okay, make little frozen cubes and serve it on top of a salad. Okay, oh. so it just adds that little oom factor, and people will think that wow, how much hard work you've done. <laughs> but it's the same cucumber puree used in four different things. Oh, this is difficult talking to you. And hang on, someone has just oh. asked uh, okay. to whether we can use pudina with the cucumber and the uh, uh, mango. Oh, so darling, as I said, I didn't have the idea of adding the boss. It gives it that sharp flavor of chutney. Yeah, right. So that makes it a little uh, spunky. Okay, you don't have dhania. You use ch whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. It really does not matter. Okay. Now, you know, chef, even if, although you can't see it, mm -hmm. and I could pretend how delicious it is, but I would still like to taste it. Uh -huh. See, I should have tasted it. Salt more. Okay. And now, what I'm going to do? Is just one more blend. It's too thick. Okay. The pieces of cucumber. Sorry, guys. I'm multitasking. So if the video is going off, okay. Now it's better. Okay. So it's less thick. here. Yeah. Yeah. Now just one second. It's not done because yeah. you see this. You have a soup. Right. But this is just a green looking thing which means nothing. Right. Right. So there are two things, a drizzle of olive oil yeah. and what I had done is I had roasted some cherry tomatoes before uh -huh. and what you can do is either you do sun dried tomato on top uh -huh. or regular tomato just right. cubed and just roast it mm. here. And if you have any stale bread, mm. just crumble it, put it yeah. in the oven and make yeah. like a crispy crumble out of it. Okay. 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 So, and that's nicest. That's what I'm doing with all my stale bread. Okay. And if you see here, I don't know if you can see it. Yes. I had made some gluten free bread. Right. And what I did was I then just roasted it. And this is from last week, I think. Mm. Crumbled it, roasted it. And stored it in a, you know, uh, dry container, right. and that always works wonderfully well as a garnish. Okay, right. not only for a soup but also on salads. Hmm. So what I do is on top of salads, I use that as a crunch factor. So hmm. now let's get out in daylight, hmm. so you can see. Wow! How do I show it to you? No, Let it me see. see. Oh, that's lovely. Can you see it? Yes, we can. We can. Yeah? Yeah. 
it, and, and it looks now, so nourishing, you know. It's so it shouldn't be so it's yeah, and it's delicious. As I said, it's absolutely it's very nice. I mean, if you serve it, no one will believe that it's made just with cucumbers. And <laughs> it's really it's really the colors nice, the taste is very nice, the focaccia crumble just gives it the bread crumble gives it the crunchy factor right. and it's so hot and humid right. here which I'm sure so is every yeah. part where your viewers are watching yeah. it's perfect it's great lunch or yeah Ritu, we have a couple of questions on the main oh, oh I love it uh, how yeah. much how much yogurt for this proportion so I actually just put enough in nice and this Two or three tablespoons. Uh, I added a few uh, ice cubes because the ice cubes then turned it into a liquidy and also made it cold. So right. let's put it this way: for three cucumber, two full tablespoon of yogurt. Right. Okay. Yeah. I added half a roasted mango, yeah. but I would say use a melon. I did it because I said in, and yeah. the melon roasted before if you get a chance because it gives the super nice smoky flavor. Right. Okay, it doesn't just taste like a fruit juice then. Right. So, melon or roasted green mango, seasoning was just salt, little bit black pepper, little bit sugar yeah. and as I said, you can add lots of pudina and I added the pudina chutney which has really given it an oomph powder, you know, factor. Another thing you can do is instead of the bread crumble on top, you can do roasted peanuts. Ooh, That's another great that topping nice. for it. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking, do you have to roast the cucumber or just raw? No, it was just raw. You saw, I just added, as I said, I don't like to do too much work. I'm a lazy <laughs> chef. So anything that takes too much time, I don't like to do. You know, so this was whatever I did, except for the tomatoes, you know, which was roasted. And you don't even have to roast the tomatoes. I just chopped up the cucumber when our line went off. Because remember, I was supposed to do an avocado mousse. Yes, so yes. didn't have time to no. So you know, with one simple thing, you can actually uh, make such a wonderful uh, uh, dish, which can be your main course and your absolute uh, everything. Uh, I'm saying this can be your main course. This can be your soup. It can be everything. It can be absolutely, one, one absolutely. Food. And post COVID, you can serve it in little soup shots. Or little shot glasses as a pass around. It's an amazing snack as a pass around as well. <laughs> Great. Nikit, do you want to test your antenna on Ritu after she's done this wonderful? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, please do. <laughs> what is what are you testing, Nikit? I'm very curious. We can test anything. Oh, uh, wonderful. We can so, test if this soup will work for you or not. <laughs> okay, tell me. Okay, wonderful. Tell me. Okay, so we, we, we can test anything, okay? So it could be a jap, it could be a mantra, it could be anything, it could be food. So if I'm testing Ritu's uh, access over here now, I'm taking it from the video. Yeah, okay, so access is over here. It's, you see the antenna is moving? Right. Okay, now can you keep the soup in your hand? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. It's I wish I had known this before. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So see the axis is aligned. So this soup oh, is wow. good for you. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> so you can do a small test if you like. While yeah. you're holding the soup, take a breath. No, no, not like that. Gentle, gentle. gentle. Feel the breath. Feel it. Anapana style. Yeah. Just relax and feel the breath. The ease with which the breath is going. Yeah. Okay, now leave the soup aside. Okay. Now breathe again. Don't touch the soup. Okay. <laughs> Is there a difference? Well, when I had the soup in my hand, I could smell the basil and there was a nice smell coming from the soup. Yeah, the smell, but the breath. Is it easier to breathe when you were holding the soup? Mm, Slightly. To be honest, mm, Very slight didn't, difference. Didn't realize it. I'm so overexcited by this <laughs> test of yours that I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the fact of the matter is that whenever we are stressed out, it yeah. will affect the breathing. So it affects. No, but that is true. When I'm yeah. stressed, yeah. my breathing is more difficult. This I have noticed. Exactly, exactly. So then, if we can put a strategy in place, yeah, to get ourselves into alignment. Hmm. 
so we can actually test what is creating stress in our system and what is uh, working for us oh i know what is creating stress in my system right now the world around me <laughs> well niket i need to have a chat with your sister separately i yeah. want to really see you and uh, explore this a bit more <laughs> yeah yeah we can no problem anytime <laughs> so niket what what kind of uh, uh, sound therapy would work uh, safe for ritu right now no see now now you you're talking about specifics right so now that the basic point here is that if you want you can you can use sound in various ways yeah so you can do a jap you can do a mantra you can do a hum for that matter right you can uh, uh, i mean play a tune in your head that will also work right so it depends on what will work for you it's right. as simple as that right now ritu's disappeared yeah so no no it's yeah you have to see what will work for you and it's a matter of becoming aware of what is the effect on your body right what is the effect on you whether it is helping you or not hmm. so the proof of the pudding is in the in eating and tasting the pudding right you may make yes. a nice dish it may look very nice but if it doesn't yes. taste nice then there's no point of the dish so, so nikit for instance if i were to uh, to uh, chant the mrityunjay mantra and yeah. you said that it may not work for me it may Correct. work for someone else yeah so how, if we if we test works? you if we yeah. test you let's see whether your axis is aligned or not yeah okay. so it's not aligned yeah it's pretty uh-huh. out okay it's literally 90 degrees off just now my god look at this yeah. so you are pretty stressed out okay so fine you too when i wish ha what is this this the new but uh, yeah but then okay now chant the mantra okay so om triyambakam yajamahe uh, sugan sugandhim pushti vardhanam no it's not working at all look at a parsi ab ye parsi ladki mahamrutyunjay jap karegi to uski pronunciation sune correct Haan? correct ekdam <laughs> So that's what I said, you know, that if you're not going to pronounce it properly, uh-huh. then it doesn't work. Okay. I, I had an interesting experience once. Uh, uh-huh. So I had gone to this person who was on oxygen 24/7, uh-huh. and we were testing his axis. His axis was out, you know, it was like uh-huh. totally knocked out. Uh-huh. So I said that okay, maybe a jump will work for you. Right. So we started with uh, a jump for, uh, I mean, just remembering the gods and goddesses, etc. Right. Right. So we started with uh, Hanuman ji, Durga ji, every every one we went, and uh-huh. nothing was aligning him. <laughs> like me. Then suddenly he said that you know I'm I'm a Jain. Uh-huh. So the belief uh-huh. system starts to come in. What uh-huh. you just mentioned. Right. So uh, then I told him, okay, start remembering your Tritankaras. Okay. And as soon as he started remembering the Tritankaras, there was one Tritankara in which, as soon as he remembered that Tritankara, the axis aligned. Okay. So I said that if there is any jap or any kind of a prayer associated with that tithankara, okay. you start doing that. Right. So uh, and then it turned out I asked him that is there any book written by that tithankara? Right. So then what we did was he had a book, so we put a book on his hand yeah. written by that tithankara and his axis aligned. Okay. So I said that now you know keep the book with you. Ah. Uh-huh. So it will help you. Or do Sorry, was my axis aligned or not? I forgot. Yeah, it was slightly out. Aligned. The cucumber was... soup aligned your axis. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so j- just let me complete this. So, uh, so then what ultimately happened was huh? it turned out that he had had the same problem few years previously, okay. and someone had told him to remember or you know do the work with that same Tritankara, and he had got cured. Oh. And once he got cured, he left it, okay. and he came back with that same issue. Okay. So it's all based on vibrations, right? Every sound has a vibratory frequency. Right. So if you are if you are going to use the correct frequency, right, it can balance you. Basically, okay. that's the game. Okay. So and uh, how do you decide what music to listen to to calm yourself down? Again, it depends on what you're used to, or. See now again, all music has a certain effect. Right. You you have to be able to assess and understand for yourself whether it's working for you or not. Right. I would always do a test because right. I have the means. Yeah. So I would test which sound will work for you. Hmm. So we did some studies. We did a study in a dyslexic center, hmm. 
where in dyslexia what happens is you are one is to one you are dealing with yeah. uh, one is to one teachers we just added sound we added a hemisync frequency right. the monro institute technology is called hemisphere synchronization right okay where we have two sides of the brain the brain the two sides start to get synchronized right when we are using that technology so we just started using music and i was testing for each of the students which track would work for them right and we had very phenomenal results right. in the uh, process right so uh, again you have to test which sound would work for you right so basically with ritu what works for her is when she surrounded by her cooking by her food possibly yeah. possibly ritu do you listen to music when you cook oh lots all the time yeah all the time yeah. so for me if i wasn't a chef i always say i would have been a very good dj i can't <laughs> sing to save my life i cannot <laughs> sing but yeah. that has never stopped me so i will sing at my loudest in the bathroom when no one can listen to me <laughs> but i think um i i don't know anything about this alignment nothing but i truly actually believe I cook better when I have music behind me. Right. There's something. There's obviously uh, there is a thing uh, when I'm humming around and whatever. But and coming back to whether cooking makes my access <laughs> aligned or not. Again, this is something that's happened in these days. Yeah. You see, cooking had become a job for me. Right. It was a job. It is a job. Yeah. You know, the pleasure of cooking came back once again. because i wasn't doing it because i had to serve ex many customers right. but i was doing it purely for the pleasure of it right and when you can listen to nice music when you can sing along when you can it's it's a it's a different ball game all together it's completely right. a different ball game right and yeah, so, it, yeah sorry so music music will definitely change the way that you're doing things right and it's been there in all cultures it's right. been there i mean you know when the farmers are sowing the seeds they sing along yeah. and it yeah. actually transforms you it's there yeah. in all cultures yeah singing chanting for example when we yeah. are doing chanting yeah it automatically creates that resonance it creates that frequency correct. which is there correct so basically correct. when you look at hemisync as a technology it works yeah. on you know you play one sound in one year and a yeah. slightly different sound in the other year Mm. and that distinction between the two sounds create a third sound inside your head mm. now when you are chanting basically what's happening one person is singing at a particular level and the mm. other person is singing at a slightly different level and mm. when it hits that frequency and it takes you into an altered state of consciousness right. so that's why chanting is there in all cultures right Uh, we have a question a uh, couple of questions for you uh, niket one is yeah. does om chanting work in the same way because it's supposed to calm down the person chanting or listening to it but personally i've ne- never had any such okay so again the way that you're chanting makes a big difference okay right. now there are various ways in which you can chant om also and there are various schools of thought which are is how you can chant om Right. So some people say that there are three sections to Om. It's right. the A, uh, U, and then the M. Right. Some people say that you, uh, there is a gentleman in uh, America. He's done a lot of work with micro chakras. He right. says that in the morning, you should chant the A uh, more, right. the Om more, U more, and the M less. In the evening, it's little different. Yeah. Now also the way you chant it, from where you chant it. Okay, I can do a. Uh, 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 so I can do it from various places. Where it works for you, if you can become consciously aware as to what it is doing inside you, whether it's creating that uh, that the the vibration in your system and yeah. taking you into a state of peace and harmony, whether it's right. being able to do that or not. that is a feeling so the more you can assess your bodily feeling the better it is for you to be able to assess what is actually working for you we have another question from neha perival is there any music or link that is universally good for everyone something that would share that you can share which would help calm all of us in such times okay i think hemisync works the hemisync the uh, monro institute uh, music works for everyone You were hearing a track just before we started. I yeah. don't know how you felt about it. Yeah. 
so but having yes. said that what i have found is that every person is slightly different right so something will suit someone better and something will suit someone a little less right. but i find that when you are lis- listening to music yeah any music that takes you into an altered state right that is good music for you so you should go with your feeling because some people like uh, jazz some people like classical music some people like uh, western uh, music some people like uh, uh, i mean hindi songs right or some people like bhajans hmm. so you have to actually be universally i cannot say that everything there's some music which will suit everyone great one last question to you niket uh, from ganesh art i lost my father a year and a half ago after that after that i have not been as uh focused on my work and myself as i was i was very fast active but not so now how do i focus how do i go back to the original me with no doubt of my belief now no doubt in my belief so see now this is a question which is taking me to the monroe workshops right uh i mean I, that was not on the agenda but this question definitely leads to that right we can experience various states of consciousness right and in some of these states of consciousness which you are taken to in the monro process yeah you can actually connect with those that have passed okay and we've had many experiences here where uh they uh, passed on parents grandparents uh, friends they come appear and they actually commune commune with the person right. it's all a matter of brain wave patterns okay what state of mind are you in whether you are open to receiving that communication or not right. because everything is always present in in the universe nothing ever gets lost right so you can actually communicate with them i would invite i think it's ganesh i would invite you to join our 4 o'clock meditations we have for every day at 4 o'clock at least during this lockdown period we are having meditation every day if you uh, can connect i don't know if i can i give the my number there yes please yeah so my number is 9830 yeah. 38370 98300 i'll just type it here yeah i think we'll all use it <laughs> yeah so if you all can if you send me a message i can add you to the groups that we formed and you can join the 4 o'clock meditation I'm sure you'll feel feel a difference. Okay. I'm sure you'll feel a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you Ritu. You, it's been my wonderful. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you Niket. It was Thank a pleasure you. meeting you. Pleasure You're meeting not you too. The last of me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm not a foodie, okay? So I No, really no, your sister foodie. your sister makes up for it. It's okay. One is <laughs> enough in the family. I okay. I eat what I get. So Good. <laughs> Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank bye, Kaveri. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Take Pleasure. care. Bye. And I'm going to so buy that cucumber soup. Bye. Bye. Ah, yes. Bye. 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 Please like our social media handles and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell icon.